Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to our lesson. In this session, we are going to solve the question of short shoe drum break. This is the question. A single block break with a torque capacity of 250 Nm as shown in the figure. The drum rotates at 100 rpm and the coefficient of friction is 0.35. Determine the actuating force and the hinge pin reaction for clockwise and counterclockwise rotations. Determine the dimensions of the block if the pressure intensity between the block and drum is 1 newton per mm squared. Given the length of the block is twice its width. And the last one state whether the block is self-locking. The block in the question refers to the shoe. Sometimes we call it block. For the first question, we have to find the FA or in the figure it is denoted as P. And also we have to find the reaction force at hinge pin. For the second question, the dimensions refer to length and width of the block or shoe. And the third one is to identify whether it is self-locking or not, regarding on the value of FA that we get later. First and foremost, list down all the information given in the question. Here we have torque, rotational speed, coefficient of friction, maximum pressure, L equals to 2W, and radius of drum. Next, we draw the free body diagram of the lever for clockwise rotation of drum. We have the normal force which acting normal to the shoe. The friction force on the shoe follows the rotation of the drum and the reaction forces at hinge pin. Next, to determine the actuating force, we have to find the value of normal force by using the formula of torque. Then we use the free body diagram here and apply the static equilibrium equation. Summation of moments at hinge pin O equal to 0. After substitute all the values, we get P equals to 1303.6 newtons. For hinge pin reaction, we apply the static equilibrium equations, summation of forces in x direction, and we get OX equals to 1250 newtons. Summation of forces in y direction and we get OY equals to 2267.8 newtons. Then calculate the resultant forces at O, we get 2589.5 newtons. And the direction of the force is 61 degrees in the first quadrant. Next, we just repeat all the previous steps for counterclockwise rotation of drum. We draw the free body diagram of the lever for counterclockwise rotation of drum, the normal force acting normal to the shoe, the friction force acting tangent to the shoe and follows the rotation of drum, OX and OY at the hinge pin. Then before determining the actuating force, we calculate the normal force. The value of normal force is similar as previous. Then apply static equilibrium equation regarding on the free body diagram and get the formula of actuating force. After substitute all the values, we get P equals to 1553.6 newtons. For the hinge pin reaction, we apply the summation of forces in x direction equal to 0. We get OX equals to negative 1250 newtons. And summation of forces in y direction equal to 0. We get OY equals to 2017.8 newtons. Then the resultant force at O is 2373.6 newtons acting at the angle of 58 degrees in the second quadrant. 
Okay, to find the dimensions of the shoe, we have to find through the formula of Fn equals to P max A. We convert the unit of P max from Newton per mm square to Newton per meter square or Pascal. We get the value of P max is 1 megapascal. We substitute the values and we get A equals to 3.57 times 10 to the power of negative 3 square meters. We know that A equals to L times W and L equals to 2W. After we arrange and calculate, we get W equals to 42 millimeters and L equals to 84 millimeters. For clockwise rotation of drum, we get the actuating force is 1303.6 newtons. It is greater than zero, so it is not a self locking brake. But it is a self energizing brake because the moment of actuating force and the moment of friction force rotate counterclockwise or in the same direction. For counterclockwise rotation of drum, we get the actuating force is 1553.6 newtons. It is greater than zero, so it is also not a self locking brake. But it is a self de energizing brake. Because the moment of actuating force and the moment of friction force are acting in opposite directions. As you can see, the self de energizing brake has greater actuating force than the self energizing brake meaning that we have to use greater effort to break on the self de-energizing brake. That's all for this session. You may proceed to the example of long shoe drum brake. Thank you.